I'm going to take a few minutes and lay out where my cuts are going to settle. I've got my piece of wood that is two and a half inches wide and it is longer than my one foot one and three eighths. So I have some wiggle room. And I have a nice pretty knot in the middle. The first cut I'm going to want to deal with is this 30 degree angle. The piece of wood is one foot one and three eighths inches long from the tip of the point to the end of the piece of wood. Cutting angles is sometimes a little bit more challenging than simply cutting straight across a piece of wood. So I'm going to simply put a mark here. It's arbitrary because my piece of wood is longer than I need. And I'm going to put an arrow in that direction and write down 30 degrees so I know where to cut it. So when I step up to the miter saw, I don't have to do it from memory. The information is right here on my block of wood. Here we are at the compound miter saw. This saw has the ability to swing in two directions. I can cut my angle to the left, I can cut my angle to the right. Now in this particular case, if we look at our lumber and our markings that we had earlier, we want 30 degrees in that direction. So I'm going to place my wood to confirm the direction I want and push the miter saw over. Now we need to find an exact degree measurement. The saw itself has a miter guide. and We've got a lot of numbers here. It started at zero. Right over here. The little yellow arrow is set at zero degrees. Going this direction is cutting to the left and it can cut all the way up to 45 degrees. But we want it to cut to the right. So I'm going to take it and go over until I find 30. tap it so it's exact. Now, I tighten this knob at the end, which is our clamping, which clamps it into place. So as I place my piece of wood where I need it, I get to double check that the angle is going to be correct. I'll bring my saw down. The saw blade is going in the correct direction. It's going that way, according to the arrow. And I pull it down. And I'm going to pull it slightly out so that I can make match my mark. Now remember, this is our very first cut. We don't actually need to worry about hitting it right on the mark. Now that I've lined it up properly to my mark, I'm going to push the saw back. I'm holding the saw of the piece of wood with the heel of my hand, with my thumb and my fingers pointing towards the wall, nowhere near the blade. Lift the saw blade up just a touch. I'm going to start it and cut through my work. I've let go of the trigger on the saw and I wait for it to slow down before lifting it up and removing the waste. And there is my 30 degree cut. Whenever you're using a tool, once you're finished, you should return it to its normal positions. In this case, this tool is kept at the zero mark for 90 degree cuts, or zero degree cuts, depending on which way you're looking at it. I'm now back in my drawing. I've got my 30 degree cut at the end, which matches my 30 degree need over here. The next thing I need to do is measure one foot one and three eighths inches from the point. So I'm going to flip the work over, measure from this end one foot one inch and one two three eighths. There's my mark. There's my waist X. Let's go cut it. So as I bring the blade down, I put it next to the wood, and I want to move the wood over until my mark is right next to the blade. In fact, I would like to cut it so that I leave half my mark there. It's lined up right here, and as you can see the blade is quite thick, 
and that much wood is going to go away. I'm going to start my cut. I'm going to stop midway, just take a look. Well, what's interesting is that half the mark is still there, but that's how much wood disappears. All that wood disappeared. This slot, by the way, is called the kerf. Well, what's left over from the kerf. The, witness, the thickness of a saw blade is called a kerf. Length. So we're going to double check our measurement. I'm going to take my tape measure and measure to the end of the piece of wood. And what do we have? We have 13, or 1 foot 1, and 1, 2, 3 eighths of an inch. And there we have it.